welcome to Lunchbox with Adam Green. I'm Adam Green, and guess which federal agency is a smooth, efficient team? And what you're seeing now is a very smoothly, very efficiently performing team. That's right, it's FEMA! Sadly, the team is at its most efficient when it's running fake news conferences. Yes, indeed. Last Tuesday, FEMA announced a press conference about the California wildfires 15 minutes before they held it. And then, with no real reporters on hand, except for those who were allowed to call in on a 1-800 number but only listen, Deputy Administrator Harvey Johnson took questions from FEMA employees posing as journalists. Though, in retrospect, it should have been obvious after questions like these. Yeah, I got a question. Mr. Johnson, sir, is it true that FEMA will bring back Crazy Hat Fridays next summer? Because reports indicate that that was fun. But in actuality, Johnson fielded such hard-hitting questions as... Are you, are you happy with FEMA's response so far? Which, of course, led to this opportunity for modesty. I'm very happy with FEMA's response so far. If you look uh, at work to the mayor of San Diego and ask him what he thinks about FEMA's performance, and he'll tell you that he couldn't be more pleased with the support he's been provided by the federal government coordinated by FEMA. As people have pointed out, this uh, poor judgment comes on the heels of other administration miscues, like paying a columnist $240,000 to promote the No Child Left Behind Act on his TV show, and granting a White House press pass to a transparent shill whose only credentials were toned tanned military abs. Homeland Security Czar Michael Chertoff criticized FEMA on Saturday, saying, It was one of the dumbest and most inappropriate things I've seen since I've been in government. I have made unambiguously clear in Anglo-Saxon prose that it is not to ever happen again. Anglo-Saxon prose? I didn't realize that Hrothgar was still a federal speechwriter. Oh, Loftitem scale means bureaucracy. But on the softer side, White House Press Secretary Dana Perino had this to say. FEMA has issued an apology um, and an, saying that they had an error in judgment. It's not um, a practice that we would employ here at the White House. Or that we oh, oh, it isn't? That's not something the White House would employ? What, staging a fake press conference? Like the March 6, 2003 press conference about Iraq when Bush called on a pre-accepted list of reporters who were asking questions that were probably already submitted for approval? No, not like that one? No, no, that wouldn't happen? Hmm? I don't think that there was any malintent. I don't. I think that they were trying to provide information uh, to the public. No malintent, just public manipulation. And lessons learned from, from Katrina, it's like, is there day and is there night? And take a look at this. The late, great Gerald Ford allowed veteran reporter and Daily News Washington Bureau Chief Tom DeFrank to print a lot of his inner thoughts after he passed on. And they included some wry observations. After hosting the Clintons in 1993, Ford thought that Bill was, wait for it, a sex addict. Ford said he didn't miss one good-looking skirt at any of the social occasions. Ah, skirt. I clearly forgot that Gerald Ford was part of the Rat Pack. Ring-a-ding-ding, -ding, Jerry. And in 2002, Ford said that Hillary Clinton would run for president one day, and he also called Ronald Reagan a superficial, disengaged, intellectually lazy showman who didn't do his homework. So, Bill Clinton liked chicks, Hillary's ambitious, and Reagan was a vacuous showman. DeFrank's book is available at most dealers now. And finally, remember House Majority Leader Steny Hoyer saying this last year? Most weeks, yes, we will be working Monday. We'll come in Monday at 6.30 uh, and be working on Friday, as we used to do, until about 2 o'clock in the afternoon. Now, that came after a Republican-controlled Congress that convened only when Jupiter was in the seventh house following a solar eclipse. Well, last week, Hoyer announced that for the 2008 calendar year, they'd cut the Friday out of the House work week. So, hey, Iraqi Parliament, if anybody in America gives you beef for taking a three-month chill-out period, just say this. You are right. I learned it by watching you. And congratulations to Red Sox Nation for the World Series victory. And if the Patriots beat the Colts this Sunday, and the Celtics' big three of Kevin Garnett, Ray Allen, and Paul Pierce prove to be successful, then Boston will be the most insufferable place on the face of the earth. That was Lunchbox. You'd be my man. Yeah.